Okay. So you remember that one time I started a YouTube channel, put a ton of effort into like two videos and then just completely dipped out for like a year and a half? Yeah, that kind of happened. Um... What's going on? Welcome to the Northwest Blade Works Shop Tour 2021. Now, the last time I posted a YouTube video was a very, very long time ago, and I did make a promise that a shop tour would be the next video I posted. So I'm making good on that promise, even if it's been a really long time. But yeah, you know, I just wanted to jump on here and make a, well, what's going to be a not so quick video, um, showing some behind the scenes looks at what I have to work with here in my shop and some of the equipment I use on a regular basis. And, uh, yeah, just kind of bring you guys through it. I always enjoy watching these videos on YouTube and it's fun for me to be able to sit down and do my own version of one. So we'll show you some of the stuff I've got going on in the shop. Um, I'll share a couple of tips and tricks along the way that have been awesome for me with a little quality of life stuff. And uh, yeah, I also have a couple of big announcements to make at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. But let's just jump right in. So behind me, you'll see that I've got kind of a, in the third bay of this residential garage, I've got kind of a 12 foot by 12 foot grinding room that we built out. Originally it was a plastic room with some two by four construction. Um, and we very quickly switched over to sheetrocking the, the space just to make it a little bit nicer. And then I've got some workbenches lining the outside of the, uh, of the, the room here. And it's a very compact, but very efficient use of space. I'm only working with about 150 square feet total. Um, and I share this garage space. So I, I have to stay uh, very clean and very compact when I can. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to take you guys through it. So let's, uh, jump right in. I'm going to um, switch over to kind of a shaky cam thing because I'm filming this solo and it's almost impossible to do a shop tour with a tripod, um, at least in any reasonable detail. So we'll switch over to that real quick and dive right in. Okay, so here is the main finishing workbench. We'll just kind of work uh, left, left to right, and then kind of go over some of the other details here. But starting off here, this is my Athol 144 uh, bench vise. I found this in a scrap yard and paid 25 bucks for it. It was painted and rusted to crap, and I had, think the guy had no idea what it was when he sold it to me. But wire wheel, some boiled linseed oil, and this thing's uh, not quite good as new, but in great working shape and uh, an absolute steal for 25 bucks, no pun intended. So um, over here, just a one ton Arbor press with the uh, Kydex eyelet press in it. It's pretty uh, standard in every knife maker shop. Hand drill in a, in a rack here. This is a principle or at least a, a thought that I had that is pretty important is getting as much as I can up off the workbench so that uh, wiping stuff down at the end of the project is, is super easy and you're not picking stuff up to wipe underneath it. Um, so the most I can get off the bench as possible, which is why I'm such a fan of pegboards like this. Um, this is just some, you know, uh, handle hardware and little tools and stuff organization. Um, having a little magnet like this for commonly used Allen keys and, you know, square and razor blades and lube and a lighter and that kind of stuff. If it's not magnetic, I just tape a little magnet to it and it sticks just fine. Um, super handy to have. A couple of important notes up there that I always need to remember. And then, um, yeah, commonly used chemicals, all that kind of stuff. So up here is a little chemical shelf that I actually built. It's just a uh, some Amazon flange style brackets and a one by three frame with some frosted plexiglass underneath that I uh, bought one of those super cheap Home Depot, like $20 shop um, overhead lights and tore it apart and put the LEDs on the inside um, to get that nice, soft, diffused LED light that um, is great for photos as well as um, inspecting details on a knife that you're finishing up. So lighting is probably one of my, you know, knife maker shop tips. Um, that I definitely recommend is you don't realize how crappy your lighting is until you improve it. So definitely invest in some quality lighting in your shop and uh, it's a super, um, super, super important. So 
Moving on, we've got uh, two drill presses. This is my uh, old Delta that I bought on Craigslist. This, uh, this and the vice are another shop tip that I highly recommend is buying used tools. Um, this machine, I got $100 worth of use of it within the first month of owning it, let alone the fact that a comparable mach machine of similar price on Amazon or something, would have I would have had to buy two or three of those um, in the time that I've had this one. So buying used usually ends up with higher quality and longer lasting. And yeah, it comes with some baggage of the previous owner and user, but as long as nothing's critically broken, um, it's usually a much better way to go. So I do have two drill presses set up here um, just so I don't have to change bits as often. I can kind of leave them set up for fixed blades or whatever. Um, it's pretty handy to uh, not be constantly fiddling with drill chuck keys and that kind of stuff when you're working on a batch of knives. So definitely recommend having multiple set up. Um, another tip is, wow, we're just rapid fire with the tips right now. I have a little cheap, like I think they're like 25 bucks, the bucket head from Home Depot. It's just a vacuum that hooks onto a five gallon bucket. And I leave this hose usually tucked in right there. So quick and easy to grab, fire up the, the vacuum and vacuum up whatever you just drilled. So um, always within arm's reach and uh, kind of that clean as you work philosophy to help keep the shop clean, especially because this isn't a garage that I share. So um, always good to uh, be cleaning up after yourself. Down below, I've got some just tool storage. Um, I built this bench about um, four years ago and it was actually supposed to be kind of a placeholder and it kind of ended up staying permanent. So I built it around these tool chests. It works fine. It's not a super great system. I would much rather have something with modular shelves and some cabinets and stuff, but um, it is what it is. It works. These uh, Bisley micro filing cabinets are great for little drills and folder parts and that kind of stuff. Um, highly recommend those. Um, but yeah, a lot of people ask me about the bench top that I use. So this is actually melamine, um, similar to that white shelving material you can get at Home Depot. Um, it just has a black coating instead of a white coating on it. And so, it's kind of hard to track down. You have to find a supplier that can order it for you, but I found a supplier local to Portland that sells it and uh, highly recommend it because it hides stains a lot better and um, just kind of fits that whole black and gray aesthetic of the shop. Another awesome thing to do is get a cutting mat for your workbench. Um, usually in the past, my workbench tops have lasted you know two or three months before they really need to be replaced um, just because they get shredded with, I mean, I make knives like, <laughs> what more can you ask for to shred a, uh, a, a workbench top? But having this cutting mat to bear most of that um, cutting and, and, you know, hammer strikes on um, stainless steel foil packets and that kind of stuff to absorb some of that shock and, and take the brunt of that abuse uh, keeps the rest of the, of the, the work surface nice and clean. So yeah, that's the main workbench. We will uh, swing around and show you the heat treat oven and the laser and then move on to the other workbench. Okay, so here is the heat treating oven. This is an even heat KH418. Uh, yeah, it's the 120 volt model, 18 inch deep um, chamber there. I have the tap controller with the Wi-Fi um, device on it so I can check the temperature on my phone, which is super handy. It's a great machine. I've uh, replaced the heating coils and the relay on it, um, but I've also had it for, gosh, like five years and I have fired hundreds and hundreds of knives through it. So. Um, great machine, definitely recommend it if you need a heat treating oven. None of this is sponsored or any of it is like, I don't have any affiliate links or sponsors, just a disclaimer. Um, I've made two YouTube videos in my life, so it, this isn't a big time channel. And so I'm being pretty objective. All this stuff I bought with my own money and you can take that for what it's worth. Belt storage up here, um, it's nothing fancy. These long gray hooks at Home Depot are epic for storing a whole bunch of belts on one rack. And then below the heat treating oven, I've got just some quenching oil, some Parks 50 and some canola oil, and then a 10 liter uh, liquid nitrogen doer from eBay. Um, they're fine, especially for just getting into heat treating stainless steels and that kind of stuff and needing to get into cryo treating. Um, it's a great place to start, although I'll probably be upgrading here soon. So that leads on to the pride and joy of the workshop. This is my Peter Wright anvil. It's a uh, about 120 pounds and um, was actually owned by a farrier before me, which is why the horn is tweaked. He uh, bent that up to make it easier for shoeing horses. Um, I'm hoping to fix that at some point, although I wanna be super careful about how I do it just so I don't ruin anything. But yeah, this thing is a beast and it has some cool history to it. Um, the owner has kind of the lineage of people who have owned it and can trace it all the way back to 1850 when it was shipped straight from England to 
Portland. And uh, it actually had to sail around the Horn of South America because the Panama Canal didn't exist yet, which is pretty wild. But um, pretty awesome piece of kit, some awesome history, and I'm stoked to have it in the shop, and I'm looking forward to putting it to more use in the near future. Swinging over here is my acid tube. Um, nothing fancy, 50-50 mix of ferric chloride and white vinegar. Really aggressive mix, um, but that gets that nice black acid wash on most of those uh, stainless steels relatively quickly, so that's why I use it. Super disgusting spray off bucket. I use Windex, Windex to uh, hose off the knives and neutralize the acid before I go and oil them over at the sink. But um, yeah, that's that. And uh, I will swing over to the laser and show you that next. Okay, so on top of this little Husky tool cart, I have the most recent bigger purchase in addition to the shop is a Chinese 30 watt fiber laser. So this is the cheapest five star laptop that you can find on Amazon. It was about 190 bucks. And then that's all you need to run the, uh, the software. But this thing has been an absolute game changer. I used to use one of these guys, the old Personalizer Plus. These are awesome if you're just getting started and uh, are using stencils. Um, being able to mark your knives for less than like 400 bucks or whatever you need for stencils and chemicals and the marker and all that kind of stuff is absolutely epic. But this thing provides so much more capabilities from doing more advanced markings like serial numbers. And most of my knives, if you didn't know, have my name, the month and year they were made in the steel type underneath the handle scales. Um, doing deep, really crisp markings is uh, is awesome, as well as um, some of the other stuff I've been playing with, like doing jimping and stuff on the laser is pretty epic. So yeah, that's the um, that's the laser. Below is this main drawer I use as my work in progress, keeps the dust off of everything and uh, keeps it organized. And then I've just got materials and, and other stuff down here um, and some other tool stores that I don't really use. The only other thing kind of next to this station is the, Cerakote setup. <laughs> so this is my super fancy Cerakote oven, AKA the Royal Gourmet Smoker from Amazon. Um, this thing holds temp just fine for Cerakote. It's got a relatively tall chamber that you can hang stuff in and uh, for like 150 bucks, it's a pretty epic way to uh, get into doing some Cerakote stuff. And then this is my uber fancy uh, spray wall slash um, spray booth. It's just a box fan with a fil furnace filter. Um, this is not safe to do, so I definitely still wear a respirator while I'm in the shop and I'm doing this, but it just catches the overspray and prevents it from getting all over the shop, which actually works pretty well. So yeah, that's kind of the laser section and th that kind of rounds out the, uh, the whole um, kind of left side of the workshop. And now we'll swing over to the right side and show you guys the mill and the other stuff like that. Okay, so keeping in the theme, this is my other workbench over here. So you see the laser and that kind of stuff over there. On this side of the grinding room, I've got a, a small window here so that I don't feel like I'm trapped in a jail cell when I'm grinding knives. And uh, I've got just a Costco shelving rack here that I've converted into a workbench. This actually works super great for adjusting heights and getting it settled into uh, exactly how you want it to go. But um, again, I'll work kind of left to right here and show you kind of what I've got going on. There's not nearly as much stuff over here as there was the other workbench, but still kind of worth going over. This here, this monstrosity, is the token sticker wall as well as the air compressor, believe it or not. So this build box was inspired by Yoni over at Compliance Edge, and it is um, super thick, two by four framed with uh, really heavy insulation on the inside and acoustic board on the inside to deaden the noise of the air compressor. It works really well. Let me see if I can uh, fire this guy up. So yeah, super quiet. Uh, I'm not sure how well that came out on camera, but it's uh, 
awesome to uh, be able to deaden the noise. And then I've got some uh, fans and stuff that I'll run off the same switch um, that help the airflow through that. So that's the uh, air compressor setup. Next to that is a t-shirt press for heating up Kydex. These things are awesome. I used to use the old toaster oven to heat up the Kydex and I've melted more Kydex than I formed with this thing. Um, this thing has a timer and a better temperature regulator and it keeps the Kydex flat while it heats it up. Um, a million, million, million times better than using a toaster oven. Highly recommend one of these. The only time that thing ever gets turned on is if I have to unfold an already uh, folded piece of Kydex to re redo the, uh, the fold there. But um, yeah, so that's pretty great. Um, next to that is my uh, Kydex press. This is the latest one I've been using. I think this is the one from knifekits.com. Um, these work great, the butterfly style press so that you can lay the knife in just like this and clamp around it. Um, super awesome, highly recommend. And then this is the, uh, the main beast here on this, this bench. This is the Grizzly G0704 milling machine. This is in just about every knife maker shop that you see on YouTube. Um, it's an awesome way to get into a type of, this type of machine, a milling machine for um, relatively cheap. Um, you know, you're not investing tens of thousands of dollars just to get into a mill. So um, this does more than I need um, size wise for making folders. Um, doing bigger projects like Damascus stuff, you want something a little bit bigger, but for a bench top machine, they're great. And uh, as long as you're polite to it, it will do everything you ask for it. I do use a uh, Milwaukee um, drill for the collet to change that out quickly. Um, that's kind of a little hack for you is to be able to swap collets quickly. And then I have an air blaster here, which is great um, for clearing chips. Um, but yeah, that's uh, a great machine. Um, definitely recommend them if you're wanting to get into that side of things and start learning. Um, they're relatively inexpensive and a great way to get started. Other than that, down below, like I said earlier, I always have a vacuum within reach, so there's another shop back over here for mill chips and that kind of stuff. And then I've just got some more material storage and Kydex storage down here. Stainless steel foil for uh, heat treating there. Over here on the end, I've just got another Husky tool cabinet. This is the home of the granite surface plate. And then I've got uh, measurement tools in here and then just other, you know, polishing compounds and that kind of stuff. So again, storage, and everything having a home is uh, a great a great thing to have in a, in a workshop like this. So highly recommend that. Um, and then up above here, I used one of the um, these grates that are the shelves for this racking unit and I zip tied it to the end and it actually made a pretty great little uh, um, rack for safety glasses and battery charger mask and all that jazz. So earbuds for the shop, all that kind of stuff. So finding little ways to improve the, uh, the um, shop space and use it more efficiently is always great. So that's pretty much this whole area. It's uh, not a lot going on on this side, but a bunch of really useful tools. So let's head into the grinding room and I'll show you what's going on in there and then we'll uh, round out the video. Okay, so this is kind of the last corner of the shop. This is the grinding room. Like I said, it's a 12 by 12 space and uh, we boxed it in with some weather, a weather sealed door here um, to try and trap in some of the dust. I apologize in advance for the audio. It's gonna be a little echoey in here, but it just kind of is what it is. So I'm just gonna kind of work in a circle um, from this side edge of the door moving that way. So uh, like I have outside, just more belt storage, except these belts are actually being used versus just back stock. And then over here to the left, I've got the Wilmot Tag 101 2x72 grinder. This thing's a beast. It, the whole thing can flip up onto its side here to be a horizontal grinder. It's fully articulatable and configurable. Um, I have the water chilled platen for it, variable speed VFD. Um, this is where 80% of the work that I do on knives happens is on this machine right here. Whether I'm shaping, contouring, rock texturing handles, grinding out, fixed blade bevels, sharpening the knives, pretty much everything happens on this machine right here. So they're very expensive to get into, but I have made many, many times back the money that I spent um, buying this piece of equipment um, just because of how versatile it is. So it's an absolute must to have one of these in a knife maker shop. 
um, and this is mine and I'm stoked on it. Um, Chris has a, a newer model. The, this version is actually not available anymore, but his newer model has some more bells and whistles. It's pretty sweet too. I might pick one up um, here soon, but um, yeah, so there's that. These little lock line indexable vacuum tubes are great for uh, capturing G10 when you're texturing handles and stuff. Um, over here, I've got the Craftsman 2x42. These things aren't made anymore, but you can get different brands on Amazon. Um, I made a lot of knives on this thing. It's a uh, great little machine. It goes way too fast, but um, you can learn to deal with it and uh, use this for a long time while I was saving up to buy this beast. So great little grinder. It's not the one I started with, but um, it was kind of that intermittent time. I still use it every once in a while. I keep a 120 grid on here just for deburring and knocking edges off of um, rough cuts and that kind of stuff. It's always handy to have that ready to go versus having to reconfigure that if it's set up in a different way. Um, moving on to the Harbor Freight blast cabinet here. Um, this thing sucks. I hate it and I'm going to throw it away. Uh, it leaks like a sieve. It has really bad, um, the, the gun that comes with it is absolute trash. I replaced it almost immediately. And uh, I'm looking forward to replacing this with a much higher quality blast cabinet in the near future. That being said, you can't beat the price for getting started. I've blasted a lot of knives with it. It's fine, but I also hate it. So be that as it may, take it for what it's worth. Down below, guess what? Another vacuum. This one's got a uh, dust separator on it, which is awesome for all of the dusty stuff that happens here in the grinding room. But um, yeah, again, always trying to keep a vacuum that's in reach to clean up after yourself. Um, usually this room is very dirty. I cleaned it for the video, but um, it's always handy to have that. Harbor Freight tumbler, um, pretty much every knife I make gets tumbled in that at least once. And uh, those things work great, especially for the money. Uh, moving on to a couple of uh, bench top buffer machines here um, on some homemade stands. Harbor Freight one, and then one that I found on Craigslist. Um, these things are great. I have no complaints about them. Um, I never thought I was gonna really need to use this type of a grinder because I have this thing. And you can actually get attachments that host those wheels and run on this machine, which is pretty cool. Um, but these are great to have dedicated setup. Uh, I use these Scotch-Brite wheels for Kydex and then this one for steel and that kind of stuff. So those are always great to have, ready to go. Um, next to that, I've got a Post Vice. I don't remember the brand. It's a relatively small one, but it's perfect for my needs. Um, just always something to uh, be able to hammer on or grind something on with an angle grinder or whatever. It's always fancy to have that in the shop and then a little table behind that. It's always great horizontal surface to collect dust and store things that should go back in their homes. Um, next to that is my jet ho vertical horizontal uh, bandsaw here. Um, most guys go with the porta band with the little uh, off um, the table that att they attach to the, the bench top table. Those work fine. Um, I opted for this for whatever reason when I first got started. As you can see, the uh, the bandsaw blades are much larger than the portaband ones and they last a lot longer, which is kind of nice. Granted, they're more expensive, but you can get kind of the higher quality Lennox bandsaw blades. Um, and it's great because you can kind of sit right here while you're working and cutting through your piece of steel. Um, the only complaint I had is the table that it came with is trash. And so I upgraded it with a uh, quarter inch piece of steel plate right there and it works really well. So yeah, um, that's the, uh, the bandsaw. I, I hardly ever use this anymore except for handles. I hate this machine because it's probably the most dangerous machine in my shop um, besides those. Those can get really sketchy if you're not careful. Um, but I have had enough run-ins with this that I'm slightly scared of it and don't like using it. But it just creates a healthy respect for the machine so that you don't permanently hurt yourself and lose one of your digits. Um, yeah. Other than that, I've got a whole bunch of water jet skeletons here. Almost every batch that I've had done, I think is up on this wall. There might be a few that are missing, but I always keep the, uh, the steel types labeled and stuff, which is kind of fun. Um, probably my favorite shop decoration for sure is the skeletons. And then up here, I actually have another box fan set into the wall that's blowing air that way through a couple of furnace filters. So I've got air coming in this way and out that way and it keep, creates kind of a pressure difference in the grinding room and helps keep dust from escaping out the door when I have to go in and out of the grinding room. So yeah, that's kind of the setup in here. Um, like I said, not a lot going on, but just enough to uh, get done what I need to get done. And it's, and it's uh, the home of Northwest Blade Works. So um, pretty sweet little slice of paradise I've got in here.
I'm going to uh, get out of the echoey grinding room and we can round out the video. Well, that's the shop. I hope you guys enjoyed following along. I know this video is kind of dragging on, but honestly, there's a lot of detail to go over. There's a lot of tooling and different stuff that goes into making handmade custom knives. And uh, I wanted to bring you along and show you what I've, what I've got here in the shop. So, you know, I remember um, being kind of six months to a year into my knife making journey, drooling over other people's shop tours um, and, you know, wishing for the day that I would have my own space with my own heat treating oven and milling machines and, you know, um, two by 72 grinders, all the good stuff that I've got going on here. And it's cool for me to be sitting here filming this video at that point with my own version of, of that. And so it's a huge blessing for me and a word of encouragement. If you're in that point, you know, you're just getting started and, and wondering what it's going to take to build up to a, a full, a fully functional shop. Um, it didn't start this way and it takes a long time to get there. And so it might be the last thing you want to hear, but have patience and enjoy the process because for every tool that you buy off of your shopping list, two more will take its place and the, the growth and the, and the, and all that stuff. Um, it, it's a never ending process. So be sure to remember to enjoy the process along the way, because that's kind of what matters in the first place. So yeah, anyway, that's kind of my video. I, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing an inside look on what I've got going on here at Northwest blade works. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I've got couple of housekeeping things. I do have some new t-shirts up on my website. Um, feel free to jump over there and check those out. Uh, this one is one of my favorites. Um, just some designs I've been working on in my past time over the last couple of months, and I'm happy to finally share them with you guys. Um, be sure to do the you know like and, and comment and subscribe thing that all the YouTubers harass you to do at the end of their videos. If you have any specific questions about anything you might've seen in the shop tour, whether I can clarify some details, I know there was a lot going on and I'm sure I missed some things. So feel free to drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And it might end up being its own video topic or I'll just answer whatever questions you have um, as much as I can in the comments. But um, other than that, guys, I really appreciate you watching and I will uh, catch you on the next video. So I'm still here, and that's because there's one more thing. At the beginning of this video, uh, I mentioned that I have kind of a big announcement to share. So the reason I actually sat down to film this in the first place after all but completely ignoring YouTube for almost a year and a half was I wanted to take some time and document my shop in kind of its current configuration and current state because this is actually my last day in this shop. After I get done filming this video, I'm going to take a sledgehammer to that grinding room wall, tear everything down, box everything up, because I am moving. <laughs> um, it's kind of crazy to be uh, finally sharing that with you guys. It's been a few months in the making, but if you've been following along, you'll know that over the course of the last few months, things on the knife making side of things have been really spotty and kind of inconsistent. And that's because A, this isn't my full-time job, and B, for my day job, I've been working as an engineer um, in collaboration with a company called Coal Ironworks based out of Anderson, Indiana. And they build hydraulic forging presses, which are some of the best presses in the industry. Um, they serve both the blacksmithing and bladesmithing sides of things. And these tools are epic machines for leveraging, you know, small businesses in the forged side of the industry. So um, their machines are awesome. And we've been working on their digital press controller. So we unveiled this product back in Blade Show of 2021, back in June. And uh, this controller kind of revolutionizes the use case for the hydraulic forging press. It basically adds a digital readout and a bunch of different um, control modes, whether it's a full auto mode or a spring return mode. Um, it really just adds a bunch of capabilities that weren't previously possible to the, the forge press and makes it that much more of a versatile tool for the forge shop. So um, we've been developing this controller over the past year or so. And back in July, I actually flew out to Indiana to visit their shop to um, get them spun up on some controller stuff, but also to discuss coming on to their team as an engineer. So later this month, I will be starting as a development engineer for Coal Ironworks and uh, basically just being a mad scientist coming up with crazy new ideas and, and pushing the envelope on what those machines are capable of doing and overall just developing badass machines for your shop. So that that's the goal there. And I'm absolutely hyped to be joining that awesome team of people over there and really just stoked on this opportunity. Um, Couple of things. A, I'm not rebranding to Midwest Blade Works. And on that note, um, I'm not 
quitting knife making by any means. Uh, like I said, this has never been a full-time gig for me. And so I fully intend to continue Northwest Blade Works in the future. And this is actually a huge opportunity, not only for me as an individual and as an engineer, but also for Northwest Blade Works because um, relocating to Indiana will provide a lot more opportunity for me to secure my own bigger shop space, um, acquire some more equipment and just grow the knife making side of things in a way that will allow me to make higher quality and higher quantity of knives for you guys. So it's kind of a win, 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 whichever way you look at it. Um, but I'm just absolutely stoked on the opportunity and I look forward to bringing you guys along. Um, if you want to follow along with the move and all the antics that we get up to, um, be sure to follow me down, uh, on Instagram at Northwest Blade Works. And, uh, yeah, I will keep you posted guys, but, um, things are about to get a little crazy. So I, I appreciate you bearing with me. But other than that, that is actually all I have for you in this video. And I will talk to you guys soon.